Thank you, Neil. It's a great pleasure and a great honor for me to introduce Ryan P. Burns on this occasion, his induction into the Irish America Magazine Hall of Fame. A nationally regarded business executive, attorney, and philanthropist, Brian is chairman of BF Enterprises, Inc., where his son, Brian Jr., with us today, serves as president. Brian has a deep and abiding connection with Ireland for over 50 years. Most significantly for me, he has been a passionate curator of Irish heritage and art, generously sharing the treasures collected over a lifetime with all of us. His unrivaled collection of Irish paintings that comprise the Brian P. Burns collection has been widely seen over the years in the United States and in Ireland. His roots are in Kerry, but his family prospered in Boston. Brian's father, Judge John J. Burns, rose to unprecedented heights, beginning as the first Roman Catholic to graduate from Harvard Law. Brian followed his father's footsteps at Harvard Law after graduating from Holy Cross. Brian's loving pride in his father's achievements is signified by the John J. Burns Library at Boston College. The library boasts an extraordinary collection numbering some 300,000 rare books and over 17 million manuscripts and other materials. In 1990, the Burns Foundation endowed the library with a visiting scholar chair in Irish studies. Former President of Ireland Mary McAleese will be the next Burns Scholar this coming fall. It is with great pride that Quinnipiac University presents Brian's painting, the aptly titled Lest We Forget, in its permanent collection of our Ireland's Great Hunger Museum. At the dedication of our museum in September, it was my special pleasure to welcome Brian and his wife Eileen, and to thank Brian in particular for inspiring and educating me and many others about the importance and quality of Irish art. Please join me in congratulating and recognizing this truly extraordinary Irish American Brian P. Burns. Brian. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a thrill to be here. And uh, I particularly want to thank uh, one of my great heroes and one of the rising stars of the Irish diaspora in America, John Lee. I grew up in Boston, as many of you know, and a couple of paragraphs from now you'll be certain. <laughs> we never did learn to speak English. But on the other hand, I think of, uh, we used to, I have an older brother here, I want to introduce to you, my oldest brother. And uh, we used to think that hockey in America rose and fall with either the beanpot attorney or the NCAA champ hockey champion presiding in Boston or in Dartmouth or Boston University in Northeast and so forth. Little did I know and to my astonishment I woke up about three weeks ago and I heard, my God, who's for number one in the country in, in the entire NCAA but Quinnipiac University. <laughs> so, to which I said to myself and then to my dear wife Eileen, you know, I gotta learn how to pronounce it, never mind spell it. <laughs> but there are a lot of people here that I'd like to acknowledge in the one or two minutes that allowed me. I'd like to first bow to my wife, Eileen, who's been uh, <laughs> extraordinary, <clears throat> an extraordinary partner and adventure. Every time I think of taking on a project, she says, what's stopping you? And if I say, well, it looks pretty tough, she says, well, let's get started. And uh, nothing is too big or too great. And uh, I'm very, very proud of my, Eileen and I share eight children. And uh, just to, to put our family together, I happen to be lucky the fifth out of seven, so I could come out of the pack with nobody watching. <laughs> and uh, I have here my oldest brother, John, John J. Burns, who is sitting in front of me. John, could you stand up there? John and his, John's a, a graduate of Boston College and uh, a hu huge benefactor, a benefactor there and uh, endowed a football scholarship in the name of his college coach there, Mike Olivac, and is a 
huge generous uh, establishment of book bonds and other generous contributions of a philanthropic nature to the library named after his father. And then to kind of tie it up, the loose end, he's here with his lovely wife, Barbara, where they're, they're welcoming another granddaughter within the last week, so we really appreciate the trip from Palo Alto to be here today. I'd like also to introduce my youngest son, Roderick O'Connor Burns, not named after the painter, but after the last high king of Ireland. <laughs> Roderick, where are you? There he is, yeah. Roderick is, of course, uh, already uh, a brilliant success in the investment world. And uh, the trouble is he's taken up an, another avid art. He started to collect Irish art, which is, uh, we don't need any more competitors in that field. <laughs> and I've tried to alert him that it's one thing to look for Irish art. I said, be very careful of Ambassador Jean Kennedy Smith, <laughs> since if she likes it, you're not gonna get it. <laughs> But in mentioning Jean, I'd be remiss. The decades roll by. It was uh, some 80 years ago that my dad was introduced to Joe Kennedy when he was the youngest judge and youngest professor at Harvard Law School. And Joe asked him if he would join with him to help form the Securities and Exchange Commission and under President Roosevelt. They went on to, at that time, all of the banks in the United States were closed the New York Exchange, the curb as the American was then known, and the other 12 exchanges were closed. We don't know what it means not to cash a check, although the people in Cyprus, I think, are having a recent weekend experience of that. But I just want to tell you what a day, really on, beyond my birth. But just think of what they did. They had the Security Exchange Commission, the uh, Security Exchange Act of 35, the Public Utilities Holding Act to straighten out the utility mess in the United States and bring gas and power to the southern states. And as Lyndon Johnson and Sam Rayburn once told me, your, your father and your, uh, fr and your friend Joe Kennedy, they brought gas and electricity and light and power to the state of Texas. Now my dad's been dead uh, for some 57 years, but he left us all with sort of a flame that uh, we're only here for a short while, and we better get going, not waste our time. So I've tried not to do that, and causes in Ireland and for Ireland have really caught my attention. Many years ago, President Kennedy and President de Valera in 1963, on President Kennedy's last visit to Ireland, what he promised, unfortunately he was unable to keep it, that I will come again in the springtime. And then there was, as typical in Irish organization, there was some bickering, and the next thing you knew, there was a Ireland fund started. And with a large family and a lot of mail coming back and forth, I said, my God, we could stack up these invitations, and by the way, what are they collecting? So I was very uh, constructively envious of the Jewish people that six million of them could raise billions of dollars every year for the state of Israel, formed only in 1947 and of what a group of Irish Americans, which now has grown to be 45 million of us and maybe more, that we were, had thousands of organizations, wonderful celebrations and so forth, but most of them didn't raise more than a large teacup or a glass of Guinness in terms of getting money back to <laughs> Ireland. So I am very proud that we have here Loretta Brennan Glucksman, who's been an extraordinary chairman of the American Ireland Fund. <laughs> And we have her extraordinary successor, John Fitzpatrick, who's being honored here as the <laughs> new head of the American Island Fund. And uh, I don't want going to go over long, but there's one person that I do want to mention who uh, has been my inspiration for many decades. There's a lot of people here, almost everyone here, I'm sure, has done great things for Ireland and so on for so many Irish cause, and they haven't forgotten their antecedents, and they haven't forgotten their descendants and their relatives and so forth from Ireland. Uh, he is not only sui generis, but no matter how many of us are on it, Donald Keogh is primus inter pares, first of all of us. <laughs> Don, could you stand up, please? Where's he sitting? 
Okay. Uh, Don, did you stand up? Oh, good. Thank you very much, Don. Don's been through a tough period, but uh, I thank you very much. It's a signal honor. It's not just for me. It's for my family, most of all for my father and mother, without whose uh, cooperation I may not even be here. <laughs> thank you so very much.